It's time for another episode of Tucson Means Business, featuring Tucson's top entrepreneurs and leaders in the business world. And now your host, Mark Bishop. And welcome once again to another Tucson Means Business, where we feature the latest and greatest in our fair city of wonderful businesses and the people behind them and why they make them so. And of course, it's proudly brought to us by the 49ers Golf and Country Club, open for business, but with all the rules, you know, uh, single carts, uh, masks on inside the clubhouse, inside the, um, uh, the office when you first go in to check for your round and all of that jazz. But, you know... Uh, you're still going to stay apart and do the right thing and stick by what they're asking you, but you are outdoors in the sun and in the fresh air, and they're open for business. Golf is cheap, the food is good, and, uh, you know, they could do with your support. The 49ers Golf and Country Club on Tanker Verde on the right-hand side, you can't miss it. Tucson Means Business today was featuring something special because it's not every day we've got a new kid on the block in town. Uh, the way things have been, it's been horrible with COVID-19. Businesses are closing in a lot of cases and so on. But this is a success story, and I'm proud to bring it to you. And uh, I'm welcoming Crystal Kaznoff today, the Director of Marketing, Communications, and Public Relations of this particular company, this operation, this business, and a medical doctor and Chief Operation Officer, Dr. Karen, uh, Dr. Darren Kay. All right. So what is it? You got a clue? You haven't got a clue, have you? Well, it's the new kid on the block, and it's called the wonderful new hospital, Tucson ER and Hospital. Tucson ER and Hospital. Oh, the one up on, yes, the brand new one up on Broadway. Yeah, I pass it every day coming to the studio here at Stewart Title Building, the corporate offices on Broadway, uh, where we're broadcasting from. Okay, and I do welcome Crystal Kaznov and Dr. K. Hi, guys. Good morning, afternoon. Yeah, whenever afternoon, it is, whenever it is, because this, this is played 24-7, 365, <laughs> so it can be any time. Wherever you are. Crystal, you've been in the marketing, communications, and public relations field for more than 20 years. Yeah, you're just showing uh, my age. No, you, you don't. Are. Look 21. Oh, come on, come you. on. Tell us a little of your career moves before this exciting new one. Well, you know, it's been an interesting career for me. Um, I've been in the marketing field for quite a bit, bit of time so with some uh, bigger hospitals and did some consulting with hospitals, uh, worked with the fire district. And this was such a great opportunity for me because this is a new model for Tucson mm -hmm. and a, really a great service. So I'm just thrilled to be here. Well, we're going to be talking a lot about it. I've heard some incredible uh, stories, all positive, i got to tell you. You well, know, for the new kid on the block, you're doing good. How doing about pretty that? pretty good. I looked the other day, Mark, we had like 355 star reviews on Google. So uh, that kind of speaks for itself. That's fabulous. That's fabulous. Now, you received um, your bachelor's degree from the University of Arizona. That's correct. Okay. And uh, you have an executive certificate in global management from the Thunderbird School of Global Management. Uh, what exactly does that entail, Crystal? So I was always interested in global management and learning about different ways that businesses operate around the, the whole entire globe. And so I've been fortunate in my career to do some dabbling in business uh, around the globe and in some different countries and uh, just love it. But Tucson is my home and this is a great place. Well, you've lived here, what, what, 30 years? Something like yeah, that. you're going to make me count. That blows oh, the yeah. 21, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mark. You love the Tucson community, like everybody does. It's amazing. And part of your extensive experience includes serving in the executive, uh, well, as the executive director for uh, Tucson's January 8th Memorial. Correct. And the marketing and external affairs director for the University of Medical Center as well, correct? That is correct. Yeah, you're a busy girl, very busy girl. Dr. Darren Kay. MD, is a board-certified emergency medicine medicine physician practicing in Tucson, ER, and hospital, where he serves as the chief operating officer. So how does a physician-owned hospital run compared to another doctor? With a physician-owned hospital, we get to make the decisions that we feel are best for the patient based on patient care, where corporations generally do what's best for profit margin, uh, we put the patient first, and it's been refreshing, to say the least, to work there. Hmm. Well, you earned your medical degree from the University of Utah. Go Utes. Go Utes before completing an internship in surgery at the University of Colorado. But then you continued on to complete residency training in the emergency medicine at Texas Tech Health, the services center there. Right. Correct. What was that like, Dr. K? That was in El Paso, which was very 
interesting to work. It was fun. We had a great time. We learned a lot. Uh, education's good there. Mm -hmm. Any other great stories come out of there that you can remember? There's lots of stories from ERs, but most of them you can't say on the air. Right. <laughs> okay. Now you moved to Tucson, oh, what, back in 98. Uh, you practiced emergency medicine at the Northwest Medical Center and Oro Valley Hospital for over 20 years. Right. right. Uh, and if that didn't keep you busy enough, in addition to your clinical practice, you also served as an EMS, uh, the Emergency Medical Services Medical Director for 15 years for Rural Metro, AMR, Ranger and Northwest Fire District. What do you think was the greatest experience that you gleaned from all of that, Dr. K? Working with paramedics is very rewarding. It's fun to work in the pre-hospital setting, so I really enjoyed the opportunity to work with them and teach and mm -hmm. have an interaction with them daily because they, they do a very vital service, and it's pretty stressful what they have to do, so yeah, gain appreciation for what they do for us. Yeah, I mean, I was listening to, um, uh, we just recorded a show actually with, uh, uh, which is uh, sponsored by a, a Crest Insurance and Matt Nelson is the host of that show. And he was talking about, uh, his guest was a guy that's been through all of those firefighting, what they get up to and what's involved. It blew me away. I didn't realize there was so much involved and, uh, and the stress there. Um, you grew up, uh, which I don't think this is stressful, but you grew up on a ranch in Utah. I did. So what, are you a cowboy? Yeah. I, I, I've owned horses and yeah. worked with cattle for a long time. Really? And so, I mean, you know, it's not every day, you, I guess, you meet a... What, what do most doctors do? What do your buddies do as an example? I'm the only one I know that grew up on a ranch. I mean, we have... We have most of them grew up in cities, and mm -hmm. we all have different interests, but mostly... ER physicians tend to be outdoors, it seems. Most, really? Most of us all like to do outdoors. That's stuff. interesting. Maybe there's something there, uh, you know, Crystal. Maybe it's uh, wanting to get away from the stress of everything. Yeah, well, I mean, look where, uh, where we live, Mark. I mean, this is the perfect place to do outdoor activities, right, Dr. K? So yeah. couldn't well, be in a is. better spot. Well, let's talk about uh, the new kid on the block, shall we? Well, I'm referring to Tucson ER and Hospital. Firstly... Why the name and why that way? It sort of is a self-explanatory name. We are a, what's called a micro-hospital. So we are mainly an emergency department. We're all emergency physicians. But we do have inpatient beds. So if we have patients that require IV antibiotics, dehydration need, prolonged IV fluids, we do have inpatient beds that we can put them in. Okay. We do not have an OR. We don't have... Uh, you know, ICU beds, but we are capable of stabilizing anybody with those conditions and then transferring them easily to any facility they ch choose. So okay. Very little. Yours, uh, and when I say yours, I mean that you're, you're literally one of the owners, aren't you? Yes. Okay. So there's a, like, what, a group of doctors? Correct. Okay. And, and you, well, technically, you put your money where your mouth is. And because we're so invested, I think it shows in the care people get and the time yeah. they spend. Well, you know, in business, the old traditional saying is you put some put some skin in the in the game. Correct. Um, the, <laughs> really, with your industry, because uh, you know you get a group of doctors together. They've you've worked for years to study. You've paid for years. Now you invest your money back into helping others. And if you don't do what you say you do, you're not going to do what you want to do, are you? Agreed. So that's uh, that's that's uh, the leaf can be taken out of that I think for business overall. It's a full service emergency room and hospital. Uh, now your advertising catch cry crystal. Uh, we opened our doors to do one thing: put the care back into healthcare. That's correct. So you know. All of the hospitals in, in town are great, and they're all caring for their patients. But unfortunately, when you're in a larger hospital environment, it's difficult to be able to make on-the-spot decisions that the physicians need to make and, and to give the type of attention we really want to give to our patients. So from the minute a patient pulls up actually into our parking structure, they get immediate care. And I don't know of any other place uh, in southern Arizona that is like this. Mm. You know, you don't have to wait in a lobby and be exposed to, to other illnesses. Uh, you're going to get immediate care. You're having someone come and meet you out there right away and take you back. And it's just such a phenomenal experience. It's like 
well, I couldn't believe this, Mark, really. It's like concierge medicine for the average person. No, and we're not going back when Liberace used to play pianos in the, in the reception area back. and all that jazz, right? That's right. Because we had a guy in Australia try that, too, in Sydney, and he was pretty popular in the <laughs> beginning. Um, I, look, it's, it's audio, and radio is the theater of the mind. So try and help me understand what's... I, I do understand this. If I go into an emergency room in a hospital, and I've had a couple of that since being here... Um, God knows who's in there, how busy it is, right. kids running around, this and that, people waiting, and often hours. How can you do what you do, what you just said that you do, and be so quick about it all? So it's really incredible process to watch. And until I saw it myself, I almost didn't believe it. Well, I want you to try and explain visually to the listeners what, am, what, would it, what do I see? I come to the front door. You come to the front door. So because of COVID right now, we do what a lot of hospitals and medical facilities are doing. The patient calls us when they arrive, and immediately we have a nurse go out and take their temperature and bring them back. They'll come into an area straight back to triage without ever interacting with another patient. Okay, that's that's pretty good. But I've come, what, in the car to the front door and the nurse comes out? So or I have, I've, I've had to come out of the car and go to a what, a little waiting area? So you call from your car, and the nurse will literally come out and meet you at your car. Okay. So they'll take your temperature. Uh, we'll get to make sure that you get a mask if you don't have a mask and mm -hmm. come on back. And then really what happens is transformative because immediately you are seen by the nurses and the physicians. So all of our physicians are board-certified emergency room physicians. And it's immediate care is what we call it. And so you are taken, you are seen absolutely immediately. And because we have all kinds of services there we'll talk about as far as laboratory and imaging, mm -hmm. it's a much quicker process because these physicians have set it up where they can see results of an image or a lab just in a matter of moments. Mm. So we can just get that patient taken care of. And as Dr. K was saying, if it's a situation where they need to be observed for a little bit longer or have some mm -hmm. fluid, something like that, we have this beautiful area on the on an, the other side. The hospital's actually sort of split in two. We have the emergency room side, and in that emergency room side, beautiful big rooms with TVs. We have a, a pediatric room that is completely themed just for kids with toys. Toy Story characters all over the walls oh. and a Toy Story video. So, I mean, it's just very private and it's and you just feel like mm -hmm. everyone there is for you. It sounds like there's an accent for children. You know, we have both. We have a, adult and children care. But I tell you that as a mother, I can tell you that it's really scary for kids coming into an emergency room. Let's say they break mm. their arm yeah. or they have oh, something yeah. going on. My word. And so sitting in a in a lobby where there are a lot of other sick people, that just compounds to that stress level. And so we're just taking each person that walks in where they're at and catering to their needs. And that's what's so exciting to me, really. I just want to get one thing I understand. When I initially rang up then to book to come there, I would have been given on the phone, oh, well, I already know the number because I've rung you, but I'm trying to figure out that when I arrive in the car, how do I know to call immediately that number? Where do I get that from? There are signs on every parking space. Ah, yes, that's a good Yes, on every idea. parking space. And they can go to our website and pre-register. So there's a little bit of paperwork. If they want to do that at home before they come, they okay, can. Okay, okay. Or we'll bring it to them where they are. So mm -hmm. No, I like the idea. We yeah. can pull up. There's signs everywhere. You've thought of that because, you know, sometimes people just forget simple things like that. Especially you when you don't feel good. look at all over the good, place. Right? Especially when you don't feel good. We are physician owners. We pride ourselves in our ability to offer state-of-the-art testing and diagnostics while providing value-based quality care with a concierge level of service, Dr. K. Correct. What we have is MRI, CT, ultrasound, full-service lab, x-ray, treated some of the best nursing staff in the city. I mean, I've been here 21 years and... We have great nurses. Well, you've worked in a few different places around. How did you get hold of the stuff? Uh, 
they want to come. It, we that's part of our th- model makes it great to work there, and so what word got out so word quickly? Got out and, uh, yes, but you wouldn't have opened that. I mean, how, how did you budget? How did you? You know, we're going to open. There's a set date. You've got to have your staff in place before the opening doors. Yeah, we had nurses that knew nurses. The word traveled. I mean, Tucson, as you know, is a small town. So Yeah, two degrees of separation yeah. and no more. <laughs> and so that was that word. Got around the next minute. They're applying for you. And we have really great nurses. And so mm-hmm. it's a good experience. And we do aim to, you know, the new model of primary care was the concierge doctor and we thought, why can't you do this in an emergency setting where right. you treat people how they want to be treated? And, okay. And, and so here we are. How did it come about? I mean, I don't know how many physicians are board members and, and part owners, but who got together with what on a Sunday afternoon and said, look? <laughs> well, we didn't invent it, obviously. Uh, there are other facilities around the country, and we have a parent company that is owned by a physician in Texas, and he is part of the owner. Mm-hmm. So he, you know, and but yeah, two of my partners that I've known for years, we discussed it, and we've been talking about it for a long time. But there's a lot of barriers to entry of open is there? hospitals. Give us an idea, if you wouldn't mind. I mean, it, a lot of legislation. I mean, you involved. just can't open it like a lolly shop, right? No, it's exp- <laughs> what it's expensive, as you understand, putting in an MRI. And oh, CT yeah, 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 the equipment yeah. alone. And then getting the expertise to have people that can run it. But you wouldn't buy it, do you? Wouldn't you lease all that stuff? No, we're, it's most of it's sold. You can lease it or buy it. Right. Uh, but you've still got to be able to pay for it uh, either way. For it. Yeah, so it was a big commitment. Big commitment. And, But, it, you know, as I work, it's just I've always thought, you know, I could do this better than what's happening where I'm at. Mm-hmm. And, and we talked about it when, you know, and now we are, and we truly are doing it better. I mean, ask ask our patients. I'm, it's it's so rewarding every day to get told it's the best place I've ever been. Yeah, it's a daily occurrence. Well, that's what I've heard. I've got to tell you, and uh, it, it, I, yeah, I'd be very proud of that if I you haven't been open. What two minutes you've been open? Yeah, it's almost a year, but it seems like a week. Is it a year already? Yeah, God, I remember the day they were still building it. Next month. <laughs> it went on and on and on every day. I drove by to come to the studio, and I thought, well, are they ever going to finish that thing? <laughs> we, thought, we thought the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> How many uh, patients then can be at once? We got seven rooms uh, in the emergency department, and as because we're micro hospital and i talk you know the average person goes to one of the big hospitals it might be a six to eight hour affair right by the time they wait a couple hours yeah. and then they once they get back and it takes time it's rare for us to go over a two hour total visit time in and out in and out i mean if you get a, a prolonged test something that requires a little more mm-hmm. it might be longer or if we have to observe you for care mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but otherwise we're efficient. We get people through, so we can move people through. So there's a very good chance I'm going to be given my tests or talked about my tests before I leave. You will be given pretty much all your tests before you leave, including mm. copies of your x-rays and okay. what you needed for your follow-up visit. And we usually try to arrange that as well. If we have, if you have you break a bone or something, we usually have a follow-up visit arranged for you before you leave. Well, the next obvious question is going to be, though, how do I pay for it? Well, we accept all commercial insurances uh we unfortunately cannot accept government as far as medicare or access plans right now because we they won't let a physician-owned facility do that we do have cash pay options that are pretty reasonable as far as health care goes so mm-hmm. the way we do that is we evaluate anybody that comes to the emergency department will evaluate and there's no charge for that we do what's called a medical screening exam mm-hmm. to make sure there's no life-threatening conditions if they have that we take care of it right away right regardless so it's not a matter of, hey fill this in first no if you're dying we're going to save you <laughs> this, uh, crystal then, i tell you i mean that's something i can't get over you know yeah and another thing mark is you know a lot of times even with my friends who i feel like you know have been around health care in their jobs or they understand insurance might say hey can i come here what is commercial insurance and really that's you know anybody who's working or on united etna cigna Mm -hmm. the list goes on right Mm -hmm. we take all those insurances and i will have to say i'm so very proud of this team they just got accredited to take tricare so the our military folks all right Um, so what does that mean in a nutshell though yeah so there are three different types of of to tricare two where allowed to take by law and those are the tricare prime and tricare 
Medicare standard. Those are those are people who are active military members. Okay. Or, and their Still families. Still in the military. In the, and their families. Mm-hmm. Uh, or, oh, and their families as well. Yes. Okay. It, and children. Yes, of course. Wow. Well, part of the family. But yeah. I mean, literally, it, it, there's no that's no smoke and mirrors. That's for no real. No smoke and mirrors. That's a darn good deal, and, isn't and it? And then also there we have a lot of military folks who are retired who are under retirement age as we would think of it. Okay. Under 65. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's another plan for them, and we accept that also. And they have, they have their families on it that we welcome all of them. So we can take all of that insurance, and you know we're not that far from the base. And this is brand new news. And I I, I had um, a lady that works with the base just came over and took a tour mm-hmm. yesterday, and she could almost not leave. She said, I can't believe we have a resource like this here. You're going to go Tucson. too quickly. I can see what's going to happen here. Yeah, gonna there's going to be another, another one. one. That's right. You're going to have right. to duplicate this baby, right? <laughs> but, if, but if it gets out too much, now you're going to have to go national. Well, <laughs> because that'd be a good problem to have. Yeah. But, uh, it, you know, the thing about our facilities, you drive by, as you have multiple times, and it, you can't really tell what's there. No, you can't. But if you looked inside, it's pretty impressive. Well, I'm going to have a sticky. I'm going to make a point of it now because you've sold me. I, I really You're listen, invited for it. Thank tour. you very much. What what need did you see in the community for a different kind of you know full service hospital and ER? I think the big need is, especially during winter months, you'll see people wait six, eight hours to get seen. Uh, obviously, we try to make that few minutes just time to get them back uh and i think er nobody really wants to go to the er but you know it's also not very fun so we don't we want to make it a better experience we want to make you know you normally you go to the er you get rushed in you see somebody for 30 seconds they're gone you might see them again you might not you know you get and then you, you're gone. We spend time. We talk to you. We'll answer questions. Mm-hmm. You know, you, we get patients call back. We'll answer them and talk to them. It's we really try to give them a good level of care. That, so there is a, there is another split off, isn't there? I mean, I've been to, I live out Tanga Verde Way. So there's an ER emergency room, but it's not a hospital. Correct. But it's a place to go as an ER instead of having to go to the hospital. But they can only go so far. Then they'll refer you. To the hospital anyway yes i've worked in the freestanding emergency departments as well and they they serve a purpose because you can do a lot but once you need to be admitted or i don't know if any of them have mri capability which we do mm-hmm. uh so we i think we I can offer a higher level of care there and then we have really good working relationships with the larger hospitals if you have something that we really need to get you over Mm-hmm. It's not. You a just problem. pick up the phone. It's not a problem. So, it happens fast. So there's really like you know three levels. There's that ER emergency room we just talked about. There's you in the middle, which is micro hospital, but you have beds and people can stay there overnight and people can be there a week if necessary, right? Correct. And then you've got the dirty big ones. Correct. The traditional hospital as we know it. How are they doing these days in your eyes? I mean, I what I was, are the real problems? Be honest. Well, I think the real pos- po- problems they're, they're facing is like everyone else. The COVID epidemic has been a problem for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then it's just it's efficiency. When you get so big, I think you lose a lot of efficiency and and, and personalized care that they just can't do. But okay, let's. But why is that? Because you know I've got to rush here, rush there, see the next patient, do the next one. There's a part of that. I think there's also we're more as you know vested in in how our business and our care is and then than just the average employee is and yeah but we're not saying here the doctors don't care no they care i don't i i, I th- there's good doctors at all facilities i i think it's just we take it to another level though okay no that's fair enough um that's very very important when you touched on COVID 19 i mean what steps do you take to protect the public from diseases like COVID 19 i think we do a very good job in that as Crystal mentioned, you show up, you call, if or you walk to our door. We meet you. We screen you there. If we think you have COVID symptoms, we we have a room that's in hospitals. You have what's called a negative pressure room. It let it sucks air in so that nothing can get out. So if we have somebody that we think may have it, we put them in that room, which isolates them from the rest of the facility. All our patients, all our guests, all our staff wear masks to protect both us and them mm. uh, and all our rooms are private all rooms have doors it's, we we take a lot of steps to protect people from COVID. Uh, as a medical doctor is a mask enough 
uh, a good mask and some distancing, and it seems that the studies seem to really say, yes, a mask is an important thing. you got the people that are against it. But really, but it's got to be over the nose, right? It's got to be over the yeah, Correct. It's it, they got to wear it. But, yeah, got to wear it properly. Because so, I've seen people, you know, wearing these face shields, but no mask. There was some data originally that said face shields were good. Some of it's coming back. As you know, this is new. So right. you can find a study that answers about any question you want, it, whether it's right or wrong, since there's so much that's came out. Hmm. You're listening to Tucson Means Business, proudly brought to us by the 49ers Golf and Country Club. Well, I hope you're enjoying this uh, episode of Tucson Means Business. And, of course, we're very grateful and very proud to have as our sponsor the 49ers Golf and Country Club, a uh, icon tradition here in wonderful Tucson, Arizona. And uh, my particular guest today from the 49ers is the Director of Membership and Tournaments, and his name is Casey Polivchak. Hi, Casey. Hey, Mark. How's it going today? It's going well. Thank you very much. I want to talk about memberships a lot of talk uh, about golf clubs going down and people not playing again and we're increasing what's happening there you know the club over the last seven years has just really made a nice big increase in uh, in membership it's been steady but if you look at our numbers you know year over year we're definitely on the uh, on the climb is there anything specific that you can uh, point the finger at for that do you think Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, we've got a new owner, and he came in, and he's just revitalized the club. Um, the club was on the verge of uh, going bankrupt or closing uh, when the new owner stepped in, and he's just continued to invest in the in the club, the facilities, the golf course, uh, the restaurant, and he's just uh, just a bit of a blessing for the the neighborhood, the community, but definitely the uh, the members of Forty Nine er Country Club. Well, it's quite unique. It's a beautiful course with trees everywhere for shade. And, of course, a lot of people think in the desert. I mean, this particular show goes all over the place, so you never know who's going to hear it uh, or which country for that matter. But should they be visiting Arizona? And uh, I've heard a lot about the 49ers Golf and Country Club. It's easy to find. It's on uh, Tancoverde Road heading east out of town. Anybody can point that way. The GPS can get it. Not a problem. It's about 12,000. And you can see it because of the entry gates. Very nice entry entry gates there and you'll see the club on your left which is the rink on mountain grill as you go into the actual golf club and then you'll find the pro shop and so on so it's easy to find from that point of view what would you say to visitors we do have a lot of visitors don't we from the midwest from the north uh, the colder climates and so on as we call friendly our snowbirds mm -hmm. yep. what would you um say to them about if they haven't been to the 49ers yet Okay, so 49er, I would liken it to a Midwestern-style golf course because mm. of the tree-lined fairways. Um, when we get our snowbirds in, if they're coming out for a, you know, a golf trip, a lot of times I recommend they come play 49er if it's a warm-up round, if they haven't played for, you know, a couple months because of the snow on the ground. Um, you know, the, the thing about it is it's tucked into the corner of the mountains out there. That's what Rincon means All right. um, in the corner. Uh, but the golf course is, uh, it is. It's more traditional tree line fairways, um, elevated tees, elevated greens. Um, it's, a, it's a great golf course to play. It's, it's not going to kill you. It's not going to. Uh, and, you know, have a bunch of huge forced carryovers, desert and cactus. And mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, it's not what one thinks. No, it's not for the but desert. Yeah, you got to keep it straight. <laughs> It'll challenge you that way. You got to keep it straight. And of course, if you, you know, if, if it talks your cork at the moment, simply go to the 49ers website, which is 49ercc.com. That's spelled out F-O-R-T-Y-N-I-N-E-R-C-C.com. There you go. Okay, so do that. There's some lovely photographs, great stories to look at, and it'll give you everything about the club. You can't, uh, you can't fail. All right? We're going to be back with Casey another time. You're listening to Tucson Means Business. We're back, and our special guests are the new kid on the block, as they say. Tucson ER and Hospital. It's on... Um, uh, Broadway. What's the number again, Crystal? 4575. We're just one block west of Swan. Just testing you there. You are still awake. Right I can on see that. it. <laughs> one block west of Swan. I haven't even had my afternoon coffee, Mark. So. There you go. Brand new, beautiful hospital and ER with a difference. 
Um, you've talked about, you know, what people can expect when they arrive. Uh, touching on the insurance again, because I think that's an important point for people. Lots of contentious issues out there today. Uh, I know I pay a fortune every month. I come from a country where I had free medicine just about. So imagine how I feel. But then again, um, you offer now and don't offer what? So you can come to our hospital and we, our physicians will meet with you. Uh, so, but just knowing up front that if you have insurance through any commercial insurance, as we discussed, um, you know, there are several different ones out there, Cigna, Aetna, United, the list goes on. We accept all of those. Uh, we also accept TRICARE, Prime and TRICARE Standard, which is new for us. We're so excited. We are prohibited legislatively from accepting Medicaid and Medicare. Uh, hopefully someday that might change, but uh, that is that for the moment. But uh, there's one thing that I Well, is there say. a reason for that, Crystal? Well, I think Dr. K could probably Dr. Answer. K is... A, it was put in the Affordable Care Act. Uh, you can speculate that maybe hospital corporations help lobby that in, but... Mm. It was placed there. So I wonder where it's going. Well, uh, you know, I, who knows? It's always a moving target with health care legislation. Mm. So, uh, okay, well, it's a pretty good rap, really, what you offer. I mean, it's it'd fantastic. have to be pretty bad if someone couldn't afford to go in there, right? It's it, and, the, and the cash pay options that I uh, see that a doctor's working with the patients really blows me away, actually. Uh, I was just talking with our imaging guy the other day, and he said, my gosh, I can't believe what someone could come and get an MRI here for. Mm -hmm. And so we do have patients that come in and ask for cash pay pricing, knowing that they may be on Medicaid, let's say, or mm -hmm. Medicare, and they'd prefer to just go ahead and, and pay that cash price, mm -hmm. you know, especially those uh, Medicare patients. Uh, a lot of times it just makes sense. But, you know, we are there to help everyone. We never turn anyone away. Our physicians will will do an assessment on you regardless if you have no insurance um, and just really work with you and give you options. And, and I, I see it happen. You know, people walk in and they may not have insurance and, mm. and the doctor's just really taking the time to say, okay, this is what's going on here and these are your options and how can we help you? Well, I was going to ask you that. If people do not have insurance, can they still, you know, come into Tucson ER and hospital? Which brings to mind though if you're so lovely like that you know and caring and thoughtful and darn good as people would say don't you risk you know the other side of the fence happening too many too many taking advantage of it well you know i think that the the people are really good and when people are sick and they really need us they're they're not coming in to take advantage um i think that if they understand what the situation is and that we do have cash pay prices that's something the doctors can talk to them about and and let mm -hmm. them know mm -hmm. I, i've seen them well well that's an interesting point if i may yeah. intervene there what the doctors talk to them about wouldn't this be discussed at the front desk in most places except i, I hate place. that jazz yeah. where you yeah. go in and then you've got to go through your life story present three or four cards uh to fill in the forms do all of this jazz before anything could be done or before any doctor will see me so to have you say, look, a doctor is likely to talk to me about it and say, don't, don't worry, Mark, you know, we'll fix this up, we'll get this organised and done for you. It's, is, I would have thought that would be all discussed before I even got in to see Dr. K. Well, there are some regulations that require us to get some information, right? So, so to treat you the, medically, the, right? The, by the law by regulations. By the law right. regulations. Mm -hmm. And so our receptionist will ask you up front if you have insurance. Um, and then if you don't have insurance, she'll tell you right then, you know, we'll be happy to give you an assessment. The doctor can talk with you about your options. So that's what's really different. Well, here. even that's different. That's not that's a turnaround. So Sorry, can't help you. No, it's not. It's, Bye. Yeah, it's, they go right back just like everyone else. That's lovely. Yeah. No, that's really, really nice to know. Your location is at 4575 East Broadway Boulevard in Tucson, in Tucson, honey. And your website <laughs> URL is www.tucson.com. 
uh, no, yeah, erhospital.com. TucsonERhospital.com. So what can listeners expect to find then on your site? So we have, we're doing a little bit of a revamp right now, but you can definitely find the services that we offer. And there's also a pre-registration button there that I really want everyone to know is there. Uh, you know, when you get to a hospital, the last thing you want to do is have to fill out any paperwork, right? So we're looking for some pretty minimal information just by law to be able to see you. So if you can pre-register right there, show up and tell them you've pre-registered and boom, back you go. It sounds like a very good marketing ploy, to be honest with you. Um Get out there and get the whole darn city registered in case to save time. <laughs> <laughs> and you get we a 10% discount help. if you do. <laughs> Dr. K, any relation to Danny? Hmm? Not that I, I bet know. you've had that ever since you were a kid, huh? Drive you nuts. <laughs> well, he was a very talented man. And he was one of my mom's favorites, one of my favorites. Wow. He was a wonderful performer, Danny K. Uh, brothers, sisters in the family? I have one brother. Um, what's he? Is he a professor or what? He's not. He work, He lives and works still in Utah. Yeah, yeah. Utah. Um, have you ever been to Utah, Crystal? I have barely been to Utah. I've been to the Four Corners. I've been uh, just in a little bit. So I'm going to have to do a little more research. Research. And because I'm from originally from Indiana, I'm pretty sure they ha must also have cows. That's who's the country, right? That absolutely who's is. Who's your bank, huh? That's right. All right. I know a little bit. Not a lot. <laughs> Indiana. That's why you're so sweet and nice, country girl, right? Uh, well, I lived there all the way until I was 10, and those are the impressionable years. So is that what it is. Okay, so there you go. Have you seen much of America yourself, your, your home country? Oh, you know, I have seen quite a bit, but not all of it. And, and so that is on my bucket list. I right. would love to hit But you've been to state. Australia three times, right? I have, I'll tell you. <laughs> I, I, I've been lucky to be able to travel around the globe, and it's one of my favorite countries in the entire world. Yeah, well, we love, uh, we love the Americans. I was going to say Yanks, but I've learned differently. You know, the Mason-Dixon line, <laughs> it's, it's, not everyone's a Yank, but to an Aussie they are. They just love the Yanks, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, love the Yanks. The phone number there, folks. Hang on, Mark. I've got to get a pen. All right. Okay. 520-375-911. Huh. Catchy, huh? 911. 520-375-911. And the other contact addresses like LinkedIn, uh, the Twitter and Facebook.com. The Facebook one, because everybody twiddles on that, don't they? Facebook.com slash uh, Tucson ER Hospital. All right. Uh, that's pretty easy to find. And what are you doing with that, Crystal? What's, what's the idea of your Facebook site? What, what's, what are your plans and goals to do with that? Well, you know, I think it's super important, uh, especially right now when people are inside and looking for information and being online and social media is just the way of the world. And so it's really important for when I came in, I wanted to show the personable mm -hmm. side mm -hmm. because, listen, Tucson's a small place and we have so much experience and not only are our doctors very well known, but our nurses and mm -hmm. our staff are very well known at mm -hmm. sort of the top of their games. So I, I just want everyone to realize what we have there. And Dr. K told you about the seven ER beds, and then we have the whole other side of the hospital that's inpatient, mm -hmm. uh, where we well, have inpatient Talk more beds. about that then, explain that to so, me. So um, we are licensed for four what we call medical surgical beds, and that's where we can take those patients again that need a little bit longer stay. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, I think it's really cool that they ha we have taken such good care and detail. Every room has a window, and because we're in the middle of town, you would think that you'd open the window and there'd be nothing there. Well, buildings. Right? Mm -hmm. So there are trees lining the side, and they've put hummingbird feeders in oh, all the trees. That's so lovely. Right. It's, it, that's just really great. I, I did want to say, Mark, you got caught with that 911, and it, that is snazzy, snazzy, snazzy. And there's one more one on the end of it at the end, oh, by the way. Well, that's why it makes it a little <laughs> bit weird. Now, did you not send me that, or did I miss out on that? Because I, I just copied it. Okay. Okay. Never mind. I'll, I'll own it. There we go. So, um, okay, we've got this. Oh, I wanted to ask you about the connection. One just went by. Ambulances, right? A metro. Fire. How does it work in your micro hospital uh, with organizations like that? We currently do not take ambulances in. We use ambulances to go out if we need to. Right. Uh, we 
could have we elected because of the fact we can't bill certain insurances. We didn't want to put patients in that scenario where they get brought to us and then they can't use their insurance. And it, we, so we just elected not to do it right now. I never understood that or knew that. So can you can you elaborate on that a little more for us to understand why that is the case? Why? Yeah, why is that the case? If if, if they come in, a, can't use their insurance because we again they, they, we are not allowed to bill Medicare or access. So if the patient has those two insurances and shows up on our facility, you know we, we couldn't do anything for them. So we elected not to take ambulance traffic at this time. And again, if that changes, we will. Okay. We have an ambulance bay. We have everything set up. Well, so, right. So really, I was driving at the fact you you can do this if you want to down the track Correct. you're set up to be able to do it it's not like because you're a micro hospital you're not allowed to take ambulances no. or anything you know um the name micro hospital it's it's only because you're smaller right correct I, you Our, know it's pretty much full service yeah pretty much full service so um the doctors now the owners the invested uh, patrons you know do you sit down once a week and thrash things out we talk in a boardroom, you know. Well, we talk a lot because we see each other at cha- each day when we change shift. We mm-hmm. talk about stuff. We, you know, e- now with email, it's nonstop. I got right, emails right. Today, so. so, how many doctors are there? We have seven that work, four partners that work. Okay, seven that work, twenty-four-seven. Correct. Three sixty-five. Correct. Even Christmas Day. Yeah. Whatever. Even Christmas Day. <laughs> Christmas Day. Yeah. Um, that's not as big, of course. You know, in America, uh, it's very different. Australia is big on Christmas Day, but of course, there's other days in America that, uh, you know, represent uh, big days like that for holidays. The sitting down and talking, you must be close and with not as many patients to be able to discuss in confidence, of course, the progression of, of patients and their illnesses. Uh, do you sort of consult each other about different patients to? Well, if if somebody's still in the emergency department, when we switch, we talk about them and tell mm-hmm. them everything we've got. And uh, the other nice thing about our facility is sometimes people go to ERs and get thrown out really when they don't feel better, right? They're just mm-hmm. they said they didn't find anything, go home. We don't really do that. If you're if you don't feel well enough to go home, we're going to keep you there longer until you're mm-hmm. feeling better. So you know, is, is that simply a case of you know? Well, I'm not real sure what's wrong with you yet, Johnny, but I really want to find out, and I don't want to send you home. That, that can happen, and we don't feel rushed or pushed to send somebody home if we feel that we'd like to watch them a little while. We have that latitude being the owners and make the decisions, and so we just put hmm. them in. Sounds like a utopia, Crystal, doesn't it? Oh, I, I've been there uh, about six weeks now, and I haven't found the non-utopian side yet, so <laughs> I'm, I'm still got that glimmer in my eye. Of course, you wouldn't be biased, but then again, you know. So what about pregnant women? Is the word getting out? This is a nice place to go? If you're under 20 weeks. Yeah. We don't have an L and D, of course. Right. You don't deliver your baby, but, you know. that's There's a few things we look at in emergency departments in Tucson in general. There. If you're over 20 weeks pregnant, then we prefer you to be at a facility that has labor and delivery. Okay. Similar to if you're. Well, I'm glad I touched on that because, you know, I'm like a lot of people. We don't have a clue. Right. And this is a very unique scenario. One talks about a hospital and an ER. I'd automatically think, doesn't matter what the hell you got, you can go there. Well, I can deliver your baby, but I've done it, but it's, you know, ideal scenario, you'd want to be an l and Right, right, facility. that makes sense, so yes. you want to be at a facility that can do it. Hmm. Similar to, you know, we have level one trauma centers. If you're in a major motor vehicle accident, but then you want to be at a level one trauma center. So right, There's right. only two of those now in town, so. Hmm. So there's some limitation, but very little. I mean, we can pretty, we can handle stroke, heart attack, we, all this stuff and realize with COVID people quit going to the hospital for fear of COVID and people were staying home having strokes and staying home having well, attacks. Well, that was going to be um, one of my next questions to be honest with you. COVID-19, I think I read this morning first thing pretty early, about 5.30 I was up researching something online and uh, 26 states are up again. Um, increase in cases. You know, it's the darn thing won't go away. But then again, I look on the news at night and I see all these university students all having an absolute mass terrific time at a party i haven't been out for weeks i'm going nuts <laughs> and what's not getting through dr k i think the big surge now is the younger patients that are getting we're sick and tired of being held up and now they're out and they're getting it and uh, luckily they're 
mortality and morbidity is much lower, so our hospitals aren't flooded yet. Mm. We still have beds. Uh, but the problem is protecting the vulnerable. Right. Right. And well, that's the worry is if, you know, if they get it and and get it over with and don't spread it, great. But, you know, what's going to happen? We don't know yet. I mean, Arizona, we got our worst a while back. We're still, but now it's starting to creep up again. But I think mm. that's more school stuff. Hmm. Well, you know, the old adage, people worry about going to hospital, even before COVID-19, there was always that concern about I'm going to catch something while I'm in there. And, you know, the old joke, God, don't you look, you're not ill at the moment, but if you want to get ill, just go to a hospital. I mean, that's not right. No, and I, I, like I say, we really do a good job of protecting you from COVID. And if you really think you're having a medical emergency, you really should go in. I mean, mm, if, but you of course. if you don't choose us. What would you advise to listeners now, you know, scared stiff, shaking like a leaf that they're going to catch COVID-19? Assure me that at the brand new Tucson ER hospital, I've got very little chance of catching it. Again, we can't say there's no chance. Like we say we take every precaution because, again, we don't want our staff to catch it either. So we're both sides. We're protecting you. You're protecting right, us. Right, right. Uh, and... You know, if you're not, if you really feel you're having a medical emergency, severe headache, chest pain, abdominal pain, if you don't come to us, go somewhere else. I mean, we're, you know, it's mm-hmm. that's the problem with COVID is not only is COVID causing problems, mm-hmm. people not going to the hospital and having other medical emergencies is compounding those problems. Now, I want to ask you something right out of left field, all right, because I don't know anything about this, but I'm sick of hearing different sides, different things all the time, blah, blah, blah. I had I was speaking to somebody the other day who has worked in the hospital industry for many, many years. And not that I want to touch on politics, but she was more on the left side to where you think this would not be the case. But she told me that there are certain jobs in a hospital that numbers and books are taken down on the cause of death. Everything has to go down, okay? And that the COVID numbers and so on were being boosted more through other deaths, but were being boosted more as all COVID deaths so that they could get more funds. Now, I, I said, what? That, you, you couldn't do that. Surely, if someone dies of a heart attack, you can't put down it was COVID. If someone dies of... I, I don't know, explain it to me. Well, again, from our standpoint, no, that wouldn't happen. But, but uh, I can't comment on whether other hospitals are doing stuff like that. It is true, though, that if you have heart disease and you catch COVID, it could contribute. So you may have survived fine without it, but you died of a heart attack because you had COVID or you died of pneumonia because you had COVID. So they do have put multiple causes of death on a death certificate. So you can say, well, he died of a heart attack. He didn't die of COVID, but he wouldn't have had the heart attack if he didn't have COVID. Oh, so it's a because of. Right. Wow. So that's how it works. So, yeah, I mean. Well, that's a technicality that's a bit of a worry. Right. You know, if you want to panic people and so on. But, uh, okay, so you're doing everything you can. How many, have you had a lot of people come in thinking they've got COVID-19? We have had quite a few. We we do, we, we're doing send out testing. We now have the capability to do some in-house testing and it's getting better. So you know, we do definitely get a lot of people that want to be tested um, mm-hmm. you know it's it's definitely part of it uh I, I like to think you know we can see for anything so and right. we can protect you from covid so i i just hate to hear those stories of people that were afraid to go to the hospital for yeah. fear of catching and i talk to patients all the time that right and, and the truth is i think they feel safer when they get there and realize what we've done but what do they tell you then they say I didn't want to come, and I was and I've waited so long because of that, and now I wish I just would have came yesterday because, hmm. you know. Yeah, so. yeah, and I think another important point is that we do COVID testing, but we have an outdoor area for that. I was going to say, yeah. So, Ryan. so it we do a very good job. Is this a free service? Separating. So. Is that a free service that you're doing? It's. We don't have the ability to do it free. We we don't bill. It costs money to do. I right. understand. If, if, I mean, if, yeah. if we, you know, we're not. We don't have the government like the county and stuff. But if we don't charge insurance, we don't charge copay. We don't charge copay. We don't. But it, okay. just build okay. the insurance right. on it. Obviously, it's it's. A, if you show up to an emergency department for testing, it's an emergency department visit. So hmm. we don't because we need an order. Right? If you come with your own doctor's order, then yeah, then it's different than it's an outpatient test. I see. Do it that okay. And we so. have a cash. Uh, and we, do have ca- we do have a cash rate. If you just want to, if you just want to know, you can hmm. pay cash and get a test. 
Okay. And, and uh, before we leave that point, what do people do then, Crystal? They just have to ring up and book an appointment or can they just walk in? No, you can just actually come straight to us. You can do the thing like I talked about, pre-register online, or you can come in. If you have a doctor's order, you just bring that with you. Okay. Um, but if you don't, then one of our physicians will actually order the test for you. Well, yep. Um, yep. remember that, folks, www.tusoniahospital.com. Those forms are on there, plus other stuff you can read about, photos of the docs and the histories and stuff Some for them. Very to, recent ones. Right, Mark and they can read about people. And people and like to... In suits you know, and uh, handsome. two in the morning with their pajamas on. They like to do research today. Yes, you and know? well they should. My, well they should. It's not like the old days. You trust everybody, bang, just do it. You, you read about it first and read the reviews and then this and that and so on. So that's good. That's marvelous. Now, before we go, Crystal, is there anything else you'd like to really add? Well, I think I'd just like to add that, again, what people think might look like. Uh, maybe people might think we're in urgent care on the outside. We have a hidden gym here uh, that once you walk in those doors, you almost aren't going to believe it. I mean, we have a beautiful ER and an inpatient side of the hospital, and we're going to take you back right away. And these people, as you can tell by listening to Dr. K, mm -hmm. this is a passion. This is not... Uh, a business venture for them. This is something they've been in their whole entire life. They have invested a ton of their own money mm -hmm. and expertise. Mm -hmm. And and we have a line of, uh, of of nurses and medical people wanting to work wanting for to us. Work so, I mean, it's just absolutely They're amazing. They're on the waiting list, are they? They're on the waiting list. Uh -huh. So but do come you, and see I mean, us. is the money that different that you're paying these people or just a little better? I think we're in line. I don't know that we're that much more. I think no. just the work environment. The work environment. They want to come to the work environment. I can understand that. No, that's very, very good. And uh, yes, uh, I know we, you know, we talk about skin in the game and all that jazz. But the truth is, you do it from the heart, and you do it because you love it, and you do it because you care about people and you want to help people. Uh, if it's a business, the money will come. That's not the first issue. But uh, no, no, I can see that. So, Crystal, absolutely amazing. I wish you all the luck in the world uh, in your position. Uh, it must be an exciting job to promote a brand new, uh, you know, hospital ER that is getting the reputation that you're getting. Yes, thank and you, uh, and you're most sure welcome. Is. And uh, I thank the 49ers. Well, thank you, Dr. K. It's been an absolute pleasure meeting you. Thank you. And um, folks, test it out. I'm going to go down and have a sticky. I'm going to have a sticky beak. I'm going to go right through the joint. I want to have a look at it. I, I've heard nothing but good things. So I want to see for myself. Well, the three of us, me, myself, and I, we're going to have a nice little time down there. But look, at the end of the day, I want to thank the 49ers. I think I mentioned before cheap golf and all that great golf prices, but we're closed at the moment, and this show is being recorded, of course, and it's done on uh, September 24th on a Thursday. The reality is uh, we're closed now for the next two and a half weeks because they're reseeding, you know, for the winter coming. So <laughs> if you hear this in the next 24 hours or something, you can't play golf out there, but the driving range is open, uh, the restaurant you can go to, the pool and so on, and the other things with the precautions. And then we're going to be back after seeding with uh, the lovely course again, ready for the winter time and the tournaments and the this and the that. And if you you're visiting our fair city, welcome. Welcome to Tucson, and we get visitors from all over America, in fact, from all over the world. Uh, you're welcome here, and come out to the 49ers and say hi. And thanks to Stuart Title, Stuart Title and Trust. Uh, their corporate offices are on Broadway, just down from the Tucson ER and hospital, hospital and ER. Um, and we're on the second floor where we broadcast from uh, Tucson Business Radio X. It's been a pleasure having you. I'm Mark Bishop. The show is Tucson Means Business. Thank you.